Hey all, I'm Adarsh Rai. I'm over here to present this wonderful series in front of you, Master the Topic. So to all you fellas out there, here I am with the first session of Master the Topic webisode series. And the first topic which we are going to discuss today is about XT, VT and AT curves. So what all things you are going to discuss in this webisode? So there will be a discussion about position time, velocity time and acceleration time curves. Then there will be a discussion about conversion methods. So conversion of AT to VT, then VT to AT, we'll be discussing about them. And by the end of this lecture, we'll be in a state wherein we have understood the graphs. And finally, we'll be talking about graphs of free fall motion. So how they look like and how free fall motion can be graphically represented, right? So first, to begin this webisode, first, I would like to question you people one very simple question. How to draw an XT and a VT curve from a given AT curve? So students have always faced difficulty. They have faced difficulty in the conversion of graphs specifically. Whether I talk about conversion of XT to VT or a VT to XT or VT to AT, they have always faced confusion. And the reason of confusion is so many. There can be that, sir, I cannot express or I cannot understand how a graph is changing or how slope or area under the curve is representing what. So we'll be busting all these problems. First, what we'll be doing, we'll be discussing individually an XT, VT and an AT curve. And then thereafter, we'll be considering a case wherein we are provided with the values of acceleration versus time for which we'll be plotting a graph and then trying and analyzing the situation, thereby considering all the details and drawing an XT and a VT curve. Okay, so to begin with, let's start our discussion with what a position time graph actually has to offer us. Okay, so from a position time graph, basically what things I can decode, I can find the value of displacement. That is nothing, it is change in position. Also, I can find the value of average velocity, which in this case will be x2 minus x1 upon t2 minus t1. Okay, then we can also find the value of instantaneous velocity from this xt curve. And how I'm going to do that, what, let's say, if I want to find the value of instantaneous velocity at this point, okay, this is any point t, okay, at any general time t, I want to find the value of instantaneous velocity. Then how I'm going to approach is, I'll be just drawing the tangent at that point. Okay, and the tangent, whatever angle it is making with x-axis, positive direction of x-axis, in this case, which is time. This angle, the tan of this angle will actually give you the value of slope, which in turn is the value of instantaneous velocity. So by this method, you can actually find the value of instantaneous velocity. Okay, now let's look into what velocity time graph has to offer us. So in a similar stance, we can find the value of change in velocity. If I'm intending to find the change of velocity from T1 to T2, I can very well know that at T1, I had a velocity V1 and at T2, I had a velocity V2. On just equating V2 minus V1, what I'm getting is the value of change in velocity. Pretty simple. Another thing, I can find the value of average acceleration as well. I have found the value of change in velocity, just divide it with the change in time. And what you'll get is, you'll get the value of average acceleration. Similarly, you can also find the value of instantaneous acceleration and the approach remains same. What we need to do, suppose I'm intending to find the value of instantaneous acceleration at this general time t. So what I'll be doing, I'll be just drawing a tangent at this point and whatever angle it is making with positive direction of x-axis, so the tan of that angle, the tan of that angle will actually provide me the value of instantaneous acceleration at that point and I can also find the value of displacement and this is pretty important. Why? Because I'll be using this case of displacement while converting my AT curve into a VT and then to finally an XT curve. Okay, so how I can find the value of displacement? I just need to focus my attention towards the area. Area this curve is making with time axis. So if I'm intending to find the value of displacement from T1 to T2, I just need to calculate the value of area. Okay, area this curve is making with X axis. In this manner, these all things can actually be decoded by a VT curve. Now let's focus towards acceleration time graph. 
So what are the things we can actually find from an acceleration time curve is one important thing can be derived and that is change in velocity. So what is change in velocity? It is just V2 minus V1. So let's suppose you had a velocity V1 at T1 and you had a velocity V2 at a point T2. Now I want to find the value of V2 minus V1. What I need is I just need area under the curve or area this curve is making with time axis. So on calculating the value of this area, what I'll be getting is the value of change in velocity. Okay, so keep this formula also in your mind because I'll be using this one as well. Now let us consider a case. Let us consider a case of a racing car. So here comes a racing car and racing car is moving on its track, right? So for the initial few seconds, if you have ever seen a Formula 1 racing car, you might be knowing for the initial few seconds, the car is in its accelerating mode. So what we are provided with is we are provided with the values of acceleration with every second which passes by. Also few important elements are provided to us that is at t is equal to 0 when the car just started off it had initial velocity 0 that means it started from rest. Also its initial position is also considered to be 0. So now with these pointers in mind and the values given to us of acceleration and time we finally can draw an AT curve of this racing car and this curve will look somewhat like this. So I want you people to just focus your attention towards the curve over here. So as you can see for the initial 5 seconds, the curve had an increasing value of acceleration for every second which passes by. Thereafter, for the next 5 seconds, acceleration became a constant value. So it wasn't 0, it became a constant value and it was equal to 10. So now how I'm going to approach over here while drawing a VT curve out of it. So things are going to be pretty simple. First we'll see how we are going to draw the diagram or how we are going to draw the graphs of VT and XT. So the first part, if I'm intending for a VT curve and I want to know the values of velocity for every second. So then how I can approach is I'll be using a very simple formula that is area of the curve with time axis and what it can tell me. So basically if you remember delta v that is the change in velocity is provided by the value of area. Okay. So now let's say I want to find the change in velocity at 4th second and 0th second. Okay, so what I want is the change in velocity at 4 second and 0 second and how I can get this by just calculating the area. So if I just calculate this area, the area which is shaded over here, what I'll be getting is I'll be getting the change in velocity that is V4 minus V0 and I pretty well know that velocity at t is equal to 0 was 0 because it was provided to me that initially the car started from rest. So this becomes 0 and V4 basically the velocity of the car at 4th second is just the value of area. On a similar analogy what I can conclude is that if I am intending to find the value of velocity at t is equal to 6 or t is equal to 8, what I just need to calculate? I just need to calculate the area the curve is making from t equals to 0 to t equal to 6 and in doing so what I will be getting? I will be getting the value of velocity at t is equal to 6. Pretty simple right? So in such a manner I can individually find the values of velocity at every second right? So this case actually helps me in finding the value of velocity for every second. Now what happens sometimes it is not asked about the exact values and they just want a schematic graph of it. Okay so for the schematic graph and what does a schematic graph actually is it is just the nature how actually a velocity time graph will change whether it will be a straight line it will be a parabolic curve it will be of any curvature they just want that. So how I'm going to find that? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to segment this curve into two sections. Okay, so the first section will be from t equal to 0 to t equal to 5. And the other section will be from t equal to 5 to t equal to 10. So let's first analyze the first section that is from t is equal to 0 to t is equal to 5 seconds. As you can see over here, acceleration here will have a linear relation with time as it was linearly increasing with time. So I can create an equation like acceleration will be equal to kt, right? So now next thing what I'm going to do, I'm going to replace this acceleration by dv upon dt, okay? So on replacing that and the next step will be put dt over there, integrate both ends and what you'll finally get is that v will come out to be 
kt square by 2 plus c and this will be a general relation between v and t. I told you I am not at all interested towards the exact relation between velocity and time. So I will just keep it in a general sense and with this general sense what I can get a feeling is that the curve between v and t for this initial segment that is from t equal to 0 t equal to 5 will be a parabolic curve. Okay, This will look like somewhat around x square is equal to 4ay. So this will be nothing, it will be a parabolic curve. Okay. Now let us focus our attention towards the second half that is from t is equal to 5 till t equal to 10 seconds and let us analyze how a velocity time curve will look for this section. So for this section that is from t is equal to 5 to t is equal to 10 seconds what I can finally deduce is that acceleration was a constant value acceleration was a constant value. So for this section my acceleration was actually a constant and equivalent to 10. So how my velocity time curve will look like? So on replacing a by dv by dt and doing the same thing as we just did, what I'll finally get is that v is coming out to be kt plus c. That is just a straight line curve. So this is actually telling me that for the next segment, velocity will have a linear relation with time. It will be a straight line. And on doing this analysis, earlier what we did, we found the values of velocity for every second. And now in this case what we did, we actually found the nature of the curve, how velocity will change for every second. And on this analysis, finally I am in a state to draw a VT curve and it will look somewhat like this. So as you can see for the initial 5 seconds, the graph had a parabolic change, velocity was changing parabolically with time and for the next half, velocity will have a linear change with time, right? Now doing the same analysis and what I'm going to do now, I'm going to find the values of position time from this curve. So with the same analysis, now what does an area tells me? What does an area in a VT curve tells me? Area of the curve with time axis. Basically, I get the value of displacement and that is nothing, it is change in position. So it can be determined by finding the value of area, right? So for this case, now let's say I am interested in finding again the position at t is equal to 4. So now what I'll be doing, I'll be just calculating this area. Okay, and this area will actually be equal to position at 4 minus position at 0. Okay, and I very well know that position at 0, it was initially told to me that position at 0 comes out to be 0. We have considered the initial position to be 0. And in that case, this becomes 0 and what I finally get is that the area is depicting the position at t is equal to 4 and in such a manner I can even find the position at t is equal to 6 and t equal to 8. How? By just calculating the area the curve has made t equals to 6, t equal to 8 or whichever time you want to. In such a manner you can actually find the value of position for every second. Such a wonderful case. Now let's look for the nature part. How basically the nature is changing? So for that, as you can see initially for this segment, we'll be doing the same analysis, right? We'll be just again segmenting the curve into two sections. That is from t is equal to 0 to t is equal to 5 seconds. So for this segment, basically velocity had a parabolic relation with time, right? So velocity will change like kt square. I'm again repeating myself, in the earlier case, I finally found that V will be equal to kt square plus c. But I am not interested in the exact values. Uh, what I'm interested in is just the generic values, just the general values. I want to draw a schematic curve. If a curve is given to us like this, then how will an xt curve look like for this particular case? Okay, so V is turning out to be kt square. On replacing V by dx by dt, and doing the same thing as we earlier did, put dt over here, integrate both ends, what you'll finally get is that x will come out to be kt cube by 3 plus c. So this will be the value of x. This will how x will change for the initial 5 seconds. And for the next 5 seconds, how will position time curve change? So for that, from t is equal to 5 to t is equal to 10 seconds, what I can actually see is here velocity had a linear relation with time that means v is equal to kt and on replacing v by dx by dt 
is equal to kt what i finally get is put dt over here integrate both ends what you'll finally get that x is coming out to be some kt square by 2 plus c and here as you can see this is of the pattern x square is equal to 4ay and this again will be a parabolic curve so in such a manner you can actually find how the nature of position time curve will be so for the initial part we found out the values of position for every second and in this case we have found the nature and finally we are in a state to tell that yes an xt curve will look like this okay so now what I want from you guys is, I want to bring all the curves in front of me. So here comes an XT curve, here comes a VT curve and here comes an AT curve. And I want you all to focus towards the second half of this curve. So for the AT curve, VT curve and XT curve, look towards the second half. That is from T is equal to 5 till T equal to 10 seconds. So what you are actually noticing in front of you is this presentation of a free fall motion. So as you can see in a free fall motion acceleration is equal to 10 meter per second square on a nearby value. Exactly it is 9.8 meter per second square but we can consider it to be 10 meter per second square. So acceleration will have a graph like this, velocity will have a graph like this and similarly position time will have a curve like this. So what you have finally dealt with you have finally found how free fall motion can be represented using graph right so basically this is not all what you need to do you need to practice more such questions based on free fall motion based on graphical analysis conversion of graphs so i know the best place where you can do that you need to hunt for the link in the description box the link to extra marks the learning app okay download it right away what it has to offer you it can offer you hundreds and thousands of questions of kinematics laws of motion and so many topics you need to apply some filters of class subject even your level and there only you will get so many questions and you can solve them right away anywhere more than that we have the availability of tests for you so you can give trending tests you can give score booster tests you can even give previous year test papers even you can create your own test and test your skills so this is all from my end i hope you enjoyed this lecture we'll meet in the next session till then thank you bye bye happy learning